The Community Strategic Plan is the community's vision for the Central Coast for the next 10 years. It's called One Central Coast because this is the first plan for the whole of the Central Coast. We are one region, one council and one community. We live in a special place here on the coast, one in which we want all members of our community to feel valued and have access to a range of opportunities to participate in the richness of community life. And every one of us can play a part in bringing this community vision to life. If people feel part of a community in some way, they'll give without even probably even knowing you're doing it. I wanted to restore this building and get it back to what it was. It was the jewel of the crown and I wanted to get it back to that. Making a difference, I guess that's what we're really here for. The smile on the faces when they see these engines and that bus coming around, they just love it. If you're following what makes you happy and excited and interested, then you're definitely going to live a life that you will be thankful to have lived. At the end of the day, we just had a good idea. We needed the support of many people to turn that great idea into a sustainable venture. My name's Tim Silverwood. I grew up on the Central Coast. It wasn't until I got a bit older and started travelling around the world, I realised that what we had was so special because people don't always treat the environment as well as we do here on the Central Coast. Our programs have focused on going into schools and running events in communities. So we also have a huge global online audience. One man cannot solve these big global problems. It's going to take a tribe of people coming together to solve them. It's a really amazing and rewarding journey in, in spreading this message around the world. I've always been on the coast and I've loved the coast. About six years ago I bought the Chapman building. I, I got the opportunity, I saw that it was for sale and I stood back on the car park up there and a village central and I looked down and you know I could just feel this was the place to be. I could just see what the town was. There's always these little niches that are you know going back and forth and you know I guess it's an obsession for all of us because we saw what Wyong was like and it's getting it to a place where you know we're proud to say we're from Wyong. Like it's become a real proud place to be. My name's Chris Waller. Myself and my wife, uh, we own Community Fire Education and the Fun Engine. We educate the community in a different way. We teach people what to do in case of fire. One of the biggest things is, is our education bus. What we do, we go out to different fates, festivals, wherever we can go. When we do the, the bus sometimes, we get 2,000 through that bus. I just enjoy communicating and getting out there and just educating in a different way. I'm Meredith Gilmore. I've lived on the coast since 2000, originally from Sydney. Chose the coast because it's close to Sydney, but it's it's got that more laid back kind of thing that I like. I've, I like li living in regional areas. I started visual art in my 40s. It's just so different from what I ever thought that I'd ever do and it, it is what led me into thinking it would be great to, to talk to people in the arts on the radio. So I started doing some shows, particularly a program called Coast Arts, which was a new show and I reached out into the community because I'm an artist as well. And I just felt like there was a lot of scope on the radio to do interviews with artists and poets and writers and that's been going now for over seven years. My name is Shana O'Brien. I am from the central coast of New South Wales on dark and young land and I'm a dancer. As an Indigenous dancer, we're very inspired by the environment and where we come from, all of the trees, the way that they curve around all of the rocks and the sea faces, the beautiful water, the fresh air, and that plays a huge part in the creative process. I was lucky enough to study at NASA Dance College, which was a super incredible experience, and the facilities, the studios are really beautiful, the staff are incredible. I declare the public forum open. Welcome to the public and those watching by webcast. While this is a public meeting, it is a meeting for the purpose of hearing from registered speakers, and I ask those members of the public present to not interject in that process. I remind those that are in the chamber that your image and what you say will be broadcast live to the public and is also recorded. So please be mindful of what you do and your comments. You should avoid making statements that might defame or offend and note the council will not be responsible for your actions. 
Uh, if you could please switch your mobile phones off or onto silent as they tend to interfere with the sound system and can make it hard to hear what is going on. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to elders past and present. I also acknowledge the connection that we all have with this land and the shared responsibility that we have to care for it for future generations. Uh, councillors, are there any disclosures of interest on those matters being discussed at the public forum? Um, and just to clarify, so it's item 5.2, Notice of Motion, Terrigal Haven, Water Quality, and item 6.1, Recision Motion, Draft Aviation Hub. Any declarations? Um, just for the record, I will declare a non-significant, non-pecuniary interest in item 5.2, Notice of Motion, Terrigal Haven, Water Quality, uh, because of my connection with the Water Watch program. Although it's not the subject of the item, I am aware that some of the volunteers are looking at connecting with that program. Uh, so um, it won't affect my consideration of the item, so I'll be staying in the chamber. Uh, so I note the following people have requested to address the public forum. So Simone Robertson on item 5.2, Notice of Motion, Terrigal Haven, Water Quality, speaking for the recommendation. Item 5.2, Notice of Motion, Terrigal Haven, Water Quality, Peter Searle, for the recommendation. And item 6.1, Recision Motion, Draft Aviation Hub, John Codrington, for the recommendation. So I would now invite Simone Robertson to address council. So Ms Robertson, um, the meeting is being live streamed and recorded and you have three minutes and I'll just get your microphone on. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Simone Robertson. I'm a Terrigal resident, volunteer lifeguard and Nippers age manager. Thanks for the opportunity to say a few words to provide the viewpoint of a mother of two kids who are always at Terrigal Beach. My thoughts and feelings on this subject is that Terrigal Beach isn't what it once was. It, Terrigal Beach is neither clear, clean or inviting. I feel embarrassed that our beautiful beach is regularly named in our list of most polluted in the state and I imagine that every council representative is also unhappy that the most iconic beach on the Central Coast has gained such a reputation. I am, however, really excited that we seem to be at the stage of addressing this problem and taking action around it. So others may talk about the effects of terrible tourism when the wider public becomes aware of these high levels of pollution. I'm often asked, is the water safe to swim in when I'm on lifeguard patrol, especially when Terrigal Lagoon is let out? In reality, and because of the rampant use of social media, this information is already out there, which is a real concern. My concern, however, lies solely with the health of my kids, the Nippers kids that I'm responsible for, and also for myself. I'm not a doctor, nor do I profess to understand the science behind the water pollution, but I can ask you all, is it right that my daughter and son should be exposed to the possibility of illness such as ear and throat infections because they love swimming and surfing at their local beach? Is it right that I have often kids not participating in their nippers sports because they do have recurring throat and ear infections during their surf season? And is it right that when it rains, the water at Terrigal represents a brownish foam and swimming is neither safe nor inviting? As an age manager for Terrigal Nippers, I take my responsibility to the children under my care seriously, and every mother and father with kids at Terrigal have the same goal, for our kids to be safe and healthy whilst learning how to navigate rips, waves and conditions that all Australians should understand when living near the beach. We should also consider the impact on our lifesavers, large school groups, dive and swimming groups and visitors to the coast. All groups are equally impacted. Will my kids be safe and healthy after swimming at our beautiful beach should not even be a question that I need to ask. And I also wonder if Coogee Beach and Sydney councils can get this problem right, why can't Terrigal and Central Coast Council? Every person here should share my opinion that we have a duty of care to look after our loved ones and to enjoy a fit and healthy and active lifestyle and keep ourselves safe on the beach. I've heard that some have suggested an aggressive publicity campaign with prominent signage on the Herigal pointing out the inherent dangers and the lack of plan to ease the problem. I personally would prefer to get behind council and back you all the way toward making Terrigal the iconic beach it once was, clean, clear and inviting. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Robertson. Um, councillors, are there any questions for the speaker? No? Thank you. 
Uh, I now invite Mr Peter Searle to address Council um, on the same item, 5.2 Notice of Motion, Terrigal Haven Water Quality. Uh, Mr Searle, I remind you the meeting's being live streamed and recorded and you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Councillors, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter Searle. Uh, I've been a swimmer at Terrigal for about 20 years. Terrigal Beach is the jewel in the Central Coast Crown. The Terrigal Beach's water quality has been rated one of the worst swim beaches in the state, often with an intercocci count, meaning one in 10 swimmers can expect adverse outcome, health outcomes as a result. Only three of the 140 ocean beaches monitored along the New South Wales coastline in 2017 recorded a poor rating, and the coast had two of them, Avoca and Terrigal. October last year, Terrigal Beach was named the state's most polluted beach. I am not a marine biologist, but the severity, the urgency of the problem is obvious. More detail has been provided uh, to councillors in a paper, and that paper has also been circulated to the media. The council's 10-year strategic plan emphasises five values, belonging, smart, green, responsible, livable. Urgently and effectively addressing the pollution of Terrigal Beach ticks all five boxes. Smart economic impact. The primary reason for visitors to the Central Coast is to go to Terrigal Beach, where they spent something like $277 million last year. The largest group was from Sydney, 57%. Continuing damaging media publicity regarding Terrigal Beach could prompt this critical cohort to go elsewhere with dire consequences for the local economy. Council values belonging, responsibility, lifestyle. Terrigal Beach is the focus of Central Coast community activity, social and economic in the region. Terrigal Surf Life Saving Club is the only club on the coast to offer all facets of surf sports. It has approximately 940 members and registered about 300 nippers. And it plays a key role in fulfilling Council's goal regarding connections to the community through participation in sport, enhancing social equality and community well-being. Finally, Council's green values absolutely coincide with its responsibility of care for both constituents and visitors and preserving this prized asset of Terrigal Beach for future generations. To conclude, the Terrigal Beach community strongly urged the Council, both by itself and through cooperation with other levels of government, to secure the necessary funds to address the entire problem regarding sources of pollution at Terrigal Beach. Urgent and effective action on this issue ticks all five boxes of the Council's strategic plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Uh, question, uh, please, if I could ask the gallery not to applaud. Um, thank you. A uh, couple of questions, Mr. Searle, I believe, for you. Councillor Best, did you have a question? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> um, Peter, thanks for coming this evening. I appreciate that. You say um, urgent um, and immediate actions are required. As a career diplomat yourself, you'd understand that bureaucracy moves very slowly. Um, what's urgent and what is it that we would do right now that would take from danger 300 nippers and 900 members? Mm -hmm. uh, well, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, the water quality uh, of Terrigal Beach is rated as one of the, the, the worst along the coast. Now, with that anticlockwise uh, count uh, exceeding 220, it means one in 10 is going to uh, suffer a, likely to suffer a health, uh, adverse health outcome. Where do you come by that one in 10? Uh, if you look at the paper I've uh, circulated, you can see more detail Thank uh, you. justifying that count and that, uh, that likely health outcome. So one in ten people entering the water at Terrigal Beach at any one time or no, when? No, not at any one time. If that level of pollution is, is there in the water, they are likely then possibly one in ten to suffer an adverse health outcome. I appreciate nobody's a scientist here. Do you, the lagoon has been targeted um, from Simone's comments earlier. Mm. Um, what about the Winnie Bay outfall coming out of the south, the prevailing south? Uh, is there any anecdotals around the Winnie Bay 
shedding its, uh, its wonderful carpet across Terrigal? Uh, apparently, in uh, some of the studies and so forth have been done, people looking very critical of what contribution that may be making. Well, I can't give you a, a, mm -hmm. a detail. That will be questions for staff. Madam Mayor, I would have a question of Simone, if it's possible, after questions are finished with Peter. Uh, we'll see how we go, Councillor uh, Just to, to add further to, uh, to your, to your um, question, Councillor, um, the rapid development of, of Terrigal over the last couple of years, and anyone driving around can, can see it at first glance, and mm. that is going to exponentially increase uh, in the next year or so. That is also going to impact very significantly on the, uh, on the uh, pollution problem of, of Terrigal Beach, you know, raising its urgency, uh, if you like. Um, so that it's not, it's not just a health issue, but an environmental and an economic issue. And in that regard, I'd argue that the establishment of subcommittees, engagement of community volunteers, workshops, etc., to report back in 12 months is going to meet is, is going to miss the, the critical nature of the timing of, of, of this uh, of this issue. Thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Sunstrom. Did you have a question for the speaker? Yes, I have. Uh, thank you, Mr. Searle. Uh, what are your concerns? Should we not address these matters? Well, uh, on, the, uh, on the health side, uh, the, the, uh, the issue I mentioned before of the, the level of pollution on some days when it's 221 and 10, etc. I mean, that, that is going to continue and it's probably going to get worse. Yeah? That, that's the first point. The second, um, in, in a sense, is somewhat anecdotal, but it, it's, it's no less uh, compelling. The local chemist uh, confirms that the two most common ailments requiring treatment uh, are gastroenteritis, uh, diarrhoea, stomach cramps, and, uh, and ear infections. More importantly, he confirms these uh, arise directly from people coming from the beach. So it's, you know, it's, it's a one-to-one it's a -one relationship. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer. You can take a seat. Um, Councillor Best, what was your question for Ms. Robertson? <clears throat> oh, thank you, thank you. Um, Thank you, Simone, again, for coming. <clears throat> Simone, you're in, I believe, either in charge or certainly a senior person within the Nippers group at Terrigal Beach and have been for a long time, is that correct? Yeah, I've been, I think, there for about six years now since my daughter joined as an under six. Uh, I wouldn't say that I'm here to speak directly on behalf of the surf club. I'm an interested party, an age manager, mm. but not a member of the junior uh, committee, which would be mm. in charge of or mm. president of the surf club. Well, thank you for all that you do. Oh, my kids have been through nippers and you people are, are champions. Thank you. No problem. Um, Simone, seriously, with what Peter's just outlined and other anecdotal information, um, we have a duty of care as a board, mm -hmm. care and control of the community's interests. Would you, um, when the lagoon is running, would you put your children in the water at Terrigal? No. You knowingly, as the manager of Nippers, 300 of them, you wouldn't put your children in the water at Terrigal? We will often look at that and uh, make a decision on the day as a nipper, but I, mm. I refer to the lagoon as the dog pool and my children are not to put their heads under that water at any point of any time. And that's been for years. <laughs> it's um, it's frightening because it is. Yeah. A, I go there from time. It's a beautiful, beautiful visual. It should be. But unfortunately, it's a great example Best, of do you have beauty question? is only beauty is only but skin Councillor deep. Thank Best. you very much, Simone. Thank you, Madam Thank Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hogan. Did you have a question? Yes, through you, Madam Mayor, to staff. I think it's got. Uh, no, we save staff for a debate. If we could, please, mm, if you could just okay. hold your question. Um, thank you, Count. Did you have any questions for the speakers, Councillor Hogan? No? Okay. Uh, thank you, councillors. We'll move on to the next speaker, Mr. John Codrington, um, on item 6.1, rescission motion, draft aviation hub. Mr. Codrington speaking for the recommendation. Mr. Codrington, I'd remind you that the meeting's being live streamed and recorded, and you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, councillors, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the gallery, uh, my name is John Codrington and I'm speaking for the motion, uh, the rescission motion, uh, which, which will be heard later on this evening at Council. Uh, by way of background, uh, I'm uh, very much in favour of small business and uh, encouraging small business, which on the Central Coast uh, we have uh, challenges severe challenges, um, the number of businesses that are employing people on the coast are declining 
uh, we've lost quite a large number of large employer companies over the last 15, 15 years or so. And small business that is still on the coast is struggling. We have an opportunity uh, with the uh, Central Coast Airport where it could be generating uh, employment, investment and uh, encouraging, encouraging people to be able to stay on the coast rather than to have to commute to either Newcastle or to um, Sydney. The point that I wanted to speak about tonight um, is the lack of consultation uh, that is being uh, exhibited here uh, by council. The, we have no issue with the, uh, the various points in, I, I refer to the, uh, the minutes of the council meeting on the 27th of November 2017, uh, where the, um, the, the council resolved uh, to put everything on hold. But the one thing that, that's been put on hold is the consultation process. Uh, the previous Wyong Council, uh, and also through the stage of the administration, commissioned a, a report, Central Coast, uh, Central Coast Airport Development Report. Um, it is available, I believe, on council, the council website, although it seems to have moved every now and then, um, but you can find it. The report's quite, quite extensive and it cost $450,000 to produce this report. And the report, I'm sure, should be made available to the ratepayers and residents of the Central Coast so that they can look at what the benefits could be or may not be, make up their own mind. This report... Uh, Mr Cotrington, your time is up, so could you finish up there, please? All right. Uh, the, lack, the lack of consultation allowing this report to be put out to the residents of the Central Coast so they can review the report and make up their own mind is a major concern. Thank you, Mr Codrington. Councillor Best, oh, you have thank a question you, Madam for the Speaker. Thank you, John, for coming again this evening. <clears throat> this is the fifth time that this council has considered this matter on my motion this evening. John, do you know any other region in Australia that has in the order of 350,000 residents that does not enjoy a corridor such as airport? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, however, we have a neighbour just to the north of us, um, <coughs> being Newcastle Council, who in collaboration with Port Stephens Shire Council, within a matter of months, got together in order to organise the expansion of the Newcastle Airport, at looking at adding a general aviation division, which of course, detracts from what we could have had down here. John? Now, it's taken only, it only took them three or four months. With the this, knowledge this, that... Excuse me, but this report here, uh, it's 14, 15 months ago. It's come to a dead halt. No consultation. In the knowledge that we know Bankstown is time, time is, is passing and it will ultimately um, be dismantled, the opportunity for us to pick up the Bankstown lift um, and employment opportunities do you see that competing with Newcastle and being, well, you know, you've got an airport up the road, why would you need one here? No, it's not, a, not uh, will not compete with Newcastle. In fact, we'll, we'll uh, work in conjunction and assist Newcastle. Because Newcastle is a little bit too far, for the, uh, far away from the Sydney market. Uh, already we have uh, people being turned away by the Aero Club. The Aero Club uh, has its own land at, at the airport, and it is full. They cannot fit any more aircraft. There's no more hangar space. Yet we have all this other space which the council could be renting out or leasing out with extra hangar space. And I know, and, and I'm reliably informed, uh, that in the last 12 months, uh, well over two dozen inquiries for hangar space have been turned away by the Aero Club because they don't have the space. Yet. We have all this space owned by the council surrounding the Aero Club 
which for not very little, for, for, for very little cost, could be turned into hangar space. Thank you, Mr. Codrington. Councillor Burst, did you have another question? Yeah. I have a final question. Thank you, Madam yeah. Mayor. It's so, so appreciative of trying to get the information out here. John, finally, um, the, the, the issues around uh, this, this airport versus the job generation out of Bankstown, you know, the kinds of jobs that we're talking about, we're not talking about 747s, we're talking about an airport hub, not unlike Lismore, where our general manager came from, aren't we? We're, not, we're talking about jobs on the ground here locally, aren't we? Uh, absolutely. It's um, engineering, engineering facilities uh, for, for light aircraft, uh, for general maintenance, uh, training, pilot training, uh, the, uh, the ability to be able to provide services. I mean, for example, if, uh, if, if you need to get something done to an aircraft instrument panel, it either has to go to Sydney or to Orange, when we could have a, an instrument shop here, uh, located here to service that. As, as, as Bankstown starts to wind down, um, we'll get more and more people wanting to move their aircraft up here, uh, or looking for other alternative places to bring their aircraft for servicing, because Bankstown at the moment still has quite a, a decent uh, engineering servicing facility, but that will eventually uh, wind down as the Badgerish Creek Airport airspace uh, bites, bites in and restricts the operation of that airfield. Thank you very much, Mr Codrington. Uh, thank you. You can take your seat, sir. Uh, thank you, councillors. I'm closing the public meeting um, and we will open our ordinary meeting in five minutes at 6.30. The Community Strategic Plan is the community's vision for the Central Coast for the next 10 years. It's called One Central Coast because this is the first plan for the whole of the Central Coast. We are one region, one council and one community. We live in a special place here on the coast, one in which we want all members of our community to feel valued and have access to a range of opportunities to participate in the richness of community life. And every one of us can play a part in bringing this community vision to life. If 
people feel part of a community in some way, they'll give without even probably even knowing you're doing it. I wanted to restore this building and get it back to what it was. It was the jewel of the crown and I wanted to get it back to that. Making a difference, I guess that's what we're really here for. The smile on the faces when they see these engines and that bus coming around, they just love it. If you're following what makes you happy and excited and interested, then you're definitely going to live a life that you will be thankful to have lived. At the end of the day, we just had a good idea. We needed the support of many people to turn that great idea into a sustainable venture. My name's Tim Silverwood. I grew up on the Central Coast. It wasn't until I got a bit older and started travelling around the world I realised that what we had was so special because people don't always treat the environment as well as we do here on the Central Coast. Our programs have focused on going into schools and running events in communities. So we also have a huge global online audience. One man cannot solve these big global problems. It's going to take a tribe of people coming together to solve them. It's a really amazing and rewarding journey in, in spreading this message around the world. I've always been on the coast and I've loved the coast. About six years ago I bought the Chapman building. I, I got the opportunity, I saw that it was for sale and I stood back on the car park up there and a village central and I looked down and you know I could just feel this was the place to be. I could just see what the town was. There's always these little niches that are you know going back and forth and you know I guess it's an obsession for all of us because we saw what Wyong was like and it's getting it to a place where, you know, we're proud to say we're from Wyong. Like it's become a real proud place to be. My name's Chris Wallace. Myself and my wife, uh, we own Community Fire Education and the Fun Engine. We educate the community in a different way. We teach people what to do in case of fire. One of the biggest things is, is our education bus. What we do, we go out to different fates, festivals, wherever we can go. When we do the, the bus sometimes, we get 2,000 through that bus. I just enjoy communicating and getting out there and just educating in a different way. I'm Meredith Gilmore. I've lived on the coast since 2000, originally from Sydney. Chose the coast because it's close to Sydney, but it's, it's got that more laid-back kind of thing that I like. I've, I like living in regional areas. I started visual art in my 40s. It's just so different from what I ever thought that I'd ever do and it, it is what led me into thinking it would be great to, to talk to people in the arts on the radio. So I started doing some shows, particularly a program called Coast Arts, which was a new show and I reached out into the community because I'm an artist as well. And I just felt like there was a lot of scope on the radio to do interviews with artists and poets and writers and that's been going now for over seven years. My name is Shana O'Brien. I am from the central coast of New South Wales on dark and young land and I'm a dancer. As an Indigenous dancer, we're very inspired by the environment and where we come from, all of the trees, the way that they curve around all of the rocks and the sea faces, the beautiful water, the fresh air, and that plays a huge part in the creative process. Thank you. So I'll declare the meeting open. Welcome to the public and those watching by webcast. While this is a public meeting, it is a meeting for the purpose of council decision making and I ask those members of the public present to not interject in that process. I remind those that are in the chamber that your image and what you say will be broadcast live to the public and is also recorded, so please be mindful of what you do in your comments. You should avoid making statements that might defame or offend and note the council will not be responsible for your actions. Could you please switch off mobile phones or onto silent as they tend to interfere with the sound system and can make it hard to hear what's going on. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to elders past and present. I would also acknowledge the connection that we all have with this land and the shared responsibility that we have to care for it for future generations. Uh, councillors, I note that we have two apologies from the last meeting, Councillor Matthews and Councillor Marquette, um, and also Councillor Vincent, I believe, is an apology. Can I have a motion to grant a leave of absence for those three councillors? Move Councillor Sundstrom, second Councillor McGregor. All in favour? Any opposed? Thank you. 
Uh, councillors, any disclosures of interest on any of the items that we'll be considering tonight? And again, I'd just note that I have a non-significant and non-pecuniary interest in 5.2 um, due to my involvement in the Water Watch program, which is not the subject of the motion. However, I'm aware that some of the community members are uh, contacting Water Watch about possible involvement. Uh, so it won't affect my decision making and I'll be staying in the chamber. Uh, could I have a motion that Council receive the report on disclosures of interest and note advice? Move Councillor Gail Collins, seconded Councillor McGregor. Uh, Councillor Best, yes. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I would declare on um, 3.1 page 77, the um, apprentice and trainee report by staff as I'm the general manager of Central Coast Group Training, who has provided training services to this council for since its inception of 37 years as a partnership with the council. Thank you very much. So is that a... And I'll leave the chamber. So significant and pecuniary, Councillor Best? Yep, you bet, always, yeah. as always. Um, any others, Councillor Best? That's the only one. Oh, I'll go. I'll, I'll, no, no. no, thank you. Uh, Councillors, a motion to receive the report on disclosures of interest and note advice of disclosures. Um, I think Councillor Gail Collins, you moved that way. Councillor McGregor, all in favour? Any opposed? Carried. Uh, Councillors, uh, moving on to items on the agenda confirmation of minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, so confirmation of the minutes of the meeting held on 11th of February 2019. Do I have a mover? Councillor McGregor, seconded. Seconded Councillor Mertens. Um, sorry, Councillor Hogan. <laughs> um, all in favour? Any opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, we don't have any items uh, to deal with in closed session. Uh, so a motion that Council receive the report and note that no matters have been tabled to deal with in a closed session. Move Councillor McGregor, seconded Councillor Burke. All in favour? Any opposed? Carried. Uh, Council will now consider those items to be passed by the exception method. So this is the process where identified items of business are determined en masse um, in accordance with the recommendations set out in the relevant business paper. So I will call out the number and title of probably the number of each item um, that councillors have indicated that they wish to be discussed at the meeting this evening and then I'll check if there are any other ones to be added. So the items I have are item 2.1 Q18 19 Q2 business report, item 3.1 response to notice of motion regarding apprentices and trainees, Item 5.1, Notice of Motion, Public Library Funding. Item 5.2, Notice of Motion, Terrigal Haven, Water Quality. And Item 6.1, Rescission Motion, Draft Aviation Hub. Um, Councillors, can I just check if there are any other items being called up for debate? No, thank you. Uh, then I'll have a motion to adopt the following items en masse and in accordance with the report recommendations. So those items are item 2.2, investment report, January 2019. Item 2.3, 2018-19 community support grant program. Item 2.4, request for memorial seat. Item 2.5, meeting record of Mangrove Mountain and Spencer Advisory Committee held on 18 December 2018. Item 3.2, activities of the Development Assessment and Environmental and Certification Units, October to December 2018 quarter. And that is it. Could I have a mover? Uh, Councillor Best, we'll have that as a separate procedural motion, so we'll just go with um, consideration of items en masse. Uh, so you've moved that. Seconded Councillor Gail Collins. All in favour? Any opposed? Carried. Um, Councillor Best, did you have a procedural? Oh, sorry, Councillor Best. I mean, Greg, because I don't turn on. Um, I'd like to um, seek uh, yours and the Council's, more so the Council's indulgence um, around bringing that item forward, Madam Mayor, as there is uh, a number of matters on the business paper that these good folk might not otherwise 
be here to hear or listen to, and we can let them go home if we deal with the matter up front rather than let you sit here for a couple of hours. Um, so I'd seek that we bring it forward and suspend standing orders to bring it forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Best. So you're seeking to bring forward item 5.2. Hopefully yes. won't be here for a couple of hours, but second to Councillor Burke. All in favour? Any opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, so with that in mind, councillors, we will go to item 5.2. Councillor Sundstrom, I believe you have a motion for this. Yes, I do, Madam Mayor, and I've given staff uh, a, a, a revised wording, which I'd like them to have up. Councillor Sundstrom, okay. can I just check, has this been circulated to the councillors? All I, the councillors? No. Okay. Um, so I will just give them time to read that. Let me just check if you've got a seconder. Second to Councillor McGregor, and I might just allow the councillors a few minutes to read that, if I could. Uh, I might just ask the staff to blow that up a little bit and you'll just have to scroll through it slowly. Uh, councillors, have you had time to peruse that? Councillor Sundstrom, I might allow you to commence debate if you wish, or open debate. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, whilst this motion does have a slight focus on Terrigal Beach, um, I'd recommend that uh, councillors have a look at it with regard to the entire local government area. We have 15 locations recently um, slated in the State of the Beaches report that rated poor here on the coast. Terrigal and Wombra Lagoons and Terrigal Beach consistently rate poor. Uh, the Beach Watch report rates that 53% of our beaches are good or very good. But I don't think we should accept 53% as an acceptable level. I don't think we should accept 53% uh, and say, yeah, that's good work, let's not change what we do, let's just keep going. Um, when you've got a, a, a mark at around 53%, that's a, that's a bad mark, and we need to focus on the 47%. People are getting sick from exposure to pollutants on our beaches. For years, under the former Gosford City Council and throughout the period of the administration, our amenity and safety have been allowed to diminish to a point where the community have come to us in numbers calling for decisive action. This motion calls for action. We have a new council now with a new focus and we must act in the interest of the community. The motion follows on from the previous question on notice that I asked just two meetings ago, but the time for asking questions has passed. We must consolidate all the previous evidence and investigations and come up with the, with the solutions that will give us the clean beaches, lagoons and waterways that the community can use and enjoy without concerns for their health or well-being. Tourism is a mainstay of the economy on the coast. We as a council regularly discuss ways to increase tourism numbers and increase the length of visitor stays. We can be certain that when a family of visitors arrive here healthy and ready for fun, but go home sick and sore from exposure to pollutants, that that's one family that won't be coming back here for a long stay. Finally, most importantly, we must make decisive action on our water quality because, the environment damage, because of the environmental damage that we are causing. 
One has to wonder if Terry the turtle would have ever become so sick uh, and require human intervention for a medical issue, a bacterial infection, if our water quality had not been so poor. But it goes further. The siltation, the pollution and the volume of material coming out into our waterways has the potential to destroy habitat and everything, uh, sorry, for everything from sea grasses to larger marine life. This motion has the intent of cleaning up our waterways, saving the marine environment, enhancing the enjoyment of beachgoers and rescuing our tourism industry. I call on my fellow councillors to put their full support behind this motion. Thank you, Councillor Sundstrom. Councillor McGregor, did you want to speak as seconder of the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'll only speak very briefly to it. As we can see, it's quite a comprehensive motion and I hope that it draws a, a collaborative response from the full council here. Um, it shouldn't be a partisan issue. It should just be about rectifying the wrongs and, and getting this under control. Obviously, as we've heard from the speakers tonight and anyone who's familiar with the area, there are some issues there and we need to start leading the way on getting on top of them. So I thank the speakers for coming to speak to us tonight, as well as all the other people in the gallery, showing that there is definite community concern, but it's also one of our most strategic natural environment areas. It's, it's important for tourism, for local businesses. This motion ticks all the boxes, and it's time that we listen to Terrigal. Often uh, I speak about a lot of the inequities with the amount of funding and money and projects that happen in Terrigal, but this is a matter of public safety and public amenity. And I think we should all be on board to get behind this motion and get on top of it and respond to uh, both the local community's concern and such an important strategic natural environmental resource for people, not only from the Central Coast, but abroad. So I commend the motion to the floor and I encourage all fellow councillors to support the resolution. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Um, councillors, are there any speakers against the motion? I do have a couple of councillors. Okay, I might have to come to you, Councillor Best. I've just got a couple of people before you. Councillor Hogan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've got a question for staff. Back in, oh yeah, but I just got in before you. No, Thank you didn't. What's that the call? Sorry, I'm back. Oh, I'm back. Um, actually put in a, a request to council support back in April 2018, and there were quite a number of estuaries and beaches that were identified as having high bacterial levels. Um, from the top of the coast, and I commend Jeff's Councillor Sumstrom's motion here because he's included the whole of the coast in this. And there were other areas noted, like Chain Valley Bay, Gwondolin, Canton Beach, Summerland Point, and Mannering Park, which are, are our far reaches of the coast, and then down at Avoca and, and Terrigal. Um, one of the things it says here is a catchment audit has been commenced by Council's Waterways and Coastal Protection Unit to look at dry and wet weather storm water in the Terrigal Beach catch, catchment to endeavour to determine the sources of those high bacterial counts. And I think that's the crux of it all is where's the high bacteria coming from? Um, so that's my question. Where, do we know where it's coming from? Was the audits carried out? Through the CEO and Mr Cox. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, Council Hogan. Now that's the million dollar question where um, what is the source? Um, the audit will, is just doing further comprehensive testing of water quality. From there, it needs to be an all of council approach to identify where, what's getting into the stormwater system and then into onto the beach and into the lagoons. Um, we need to, there could be possibly illegal um, sewer connections. It could be from, um, um, from um, you know, commercial premises, whatnot. That's the next step in identifying where it's actually coming from. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cox. <coughs> Councillor, yep. Uh, Councillor Pillen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a question through you to staff, uh, potentially Gary Murphy. Uh, I'm advised that the Central Coast Council was actually invited to apply for funding under the 2018-19 Coastal and Estuary Management Grants Program, which closed on the 10th of December. Um, given that we put forward a motion previously for our grants officer to be applying for all available grants like this, is there any reason why council, um, we've known for quite some time, now this isn't a new situation, the water quality at Terrigal Beach, is there any reason, and out at Tugra Lakes, we're hearing constant issues out there, why we haven't applied for this particular grant, please? Uh, through the CEO to Mr Cox. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Pill, and um, it was before my time taking on this director, so I don't know any reasons why 
they, um, any applications were not sought, but um, my staff are working on, I believe there's another round for June um, 2019 um, this year. So staff are looking at opportunities for funding through that program. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Cox. Um, Councillor Bess, did you have a question or? Through you, um, I assume to Mr. Cox, or Mr. Murphy is our general manager, so feel free to jump in any time, Gary. Um, gentlemen, this, um, this matter is not new to us, um, and this is a relatively new matter to the Central Coast Council, but to Gosford Council it has been an issue for many, many, many years. Um, the motion's calling for um, some, um, some water quality testing. Um, don't we do that already? Through the CEO to Mr Cox. Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, that's right, Councillor Best, through the Beach Watch program and also to, um, through my staff's um, terrible catchment audit that they're doing at the moment. So, Scott, from the motion we've got behind us, and I, I have, I may speak against the motion, um, I have some apprehension about the timing around this. And having been in council for two decades, I, I know we move expeditiously on every single matter. Um, however, this just might take more than a week to figure out. Um, so you're the director of the department, you're doing audits, you're doing sewage audits, you're doing stormwater audits, you're looking at uh, nutrient levels, fecal chloroform levels, Winnie Bay, wind directions, ocean movements, lagoons. How long do you think it might be before we actually have a report before the next council that can act on this? Mr Cox? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, that's a very comprehensive report you've just identified to have all that information. So that would be difficult to achieve uh, for the next council meeting. No, no, I mean for the next council in 2020. Um, Sorry. No, we're working towards the, uh, the, the terrible catchment audit. So, I mean, I'm confident that we should be able to get something up to council um, towards the middle of this year. Toward um, the middle of this year. That's right. Okay. Scott, you understood that tonight would be a, an issue of significant contention. D did your department bring to the chamber, i.e. the board of the council, any data as the speakers brought to? I mean, you knew this was up tonight. Did you, did you bring any detail for us to assist us in making a decision here? What are the fecal chloroform levels? What are the current pollute, pollutant issues? I mean, we don't need to wait for a fortnight to hear that. Surely we could hear it tonight, wouldn't we? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I, I do have some data from the uh, Beach Watch program. And um, is it consistent with the speaker's data? Um, I, I can't say whether it's consistent with the, the, the speaker's data. I can only give you the, the advice I've been given by would, my staff in terms you... of coliform units per 100 mils. And, and, and the Beach Watch program is an average over three years. Um, and I've got the, um, the <laughs> results of the last three years. Thank you. Um, in 17, in 1617, the coliform counts were 61.4. Um, in, in 1718, the coliform counts were 52.2. Um, in 1819, they were 46.8. So the measure of whether or not the, the water quality is good is 40 um, coliform units per 100 mils. So on average, they have been, um, the, the numbers have, have slowly been declining, but they're still not at that, that good level. But also too, it's only a snapshot of when the sample's taken too, um, yes. in terms of whether it's raining um, and climatic conditions that, that may be occurring at that particular time. So if the lagoon was to be opening or opened at the time of those levels, it would be potentially a very different reading. Well, if there's stormwater discharging um, from, from stormwater drains into either the lagoon or onto the beach, yes, that, that can um, influence the, the results. Mm, thank you. I will speak to it, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Best. Um, Madam Mayor, this issue I rise to speak on is of grave concern, obviously, to the community and to myself being here for quite some time. We've had similar problems in Wyong Council where the Canton Beach um, fecal chloroform levels went through the roof. And we had sewage overflows because we couldn't bund or we didn't have the sewage bunded at the pumping station. And we did our assessment, we found that out, we fixed it. We put up don't swim signs at Canton Beach. And it was a very difficult decision to make, let me tell you. Not a decision that I think anyone here wants to hear. I don't want to hear it. Who wants to hear that at Terrigal? But the reality is, Council, is if, if uh, Peter and Simone's data is correct, you know, running, running through 220 um, up to 
110 parts per million of chloro fecal chloroform levels, that's sewerage in the water. And we are, we are basically knowingly allowing people to enter that known health hazard, 300 nippers, 900 members, and I hear the tourists are important to Council of Sundstrom, and they are very much important to the whole coast and its employment community, but the locals are a little bit more important, I believe. And I think to put them into the water, knowing, knowing full well that we've got ourselves a serious issue occurring here with no general warning, you're turning up with your family to a lovely area, beautiful pine trees, lovely vista, food across the road, mummy and daddy, what a wonderful weekend we're gonna have here, and the council is just letting you walk across the road and step into the water with a lagoon pumping black water out just up the road. When I mean, we've seen how pristine Wamboraw Beach is and how well we've managed that, well, this is really not much different in my view, and I think we can do better than to form committees and do reports and studies that, by the way, we're already doing, and then we can kind of figure out what's blowing around the headland from Winnie Bay. I mean, there's data in the bowels of this building that I'm sure of we have, but that is just not here tonight. It's interesting. We know a lot more than I think we put out there, and I'm very concerned that this is happening in Terrigal, to one of our premier locations. People ask me, where do I live? I go, just north of Terrigal. Oh, I know where you live, you know? It's, it's, it's the spot that people know where you live. I don't know, Nora Head, where's that, you know? I'm just north of Terrigal. And it's a champion of a location and a passionate place people want to live. But we just cannot sit by and do the bystander thing and form committees. And I know it's nice to do it, and we've got more committees in this council than I think I've had in the last 20 years. This council, one thing it'll be remembered for is its committees. And, and we just keep kicking the can down the road. This needs action and it needs action now. That motion needs dates and times in it, with respect, Jeff. It needs dates and times. It needs, it needs milestones. It's got to happen. The stormwater runs out next to the pool. Where's the gross pollutant trap? I mean, why aren't the gross pollutant traps on every one of its outfalls, but not down there at the most premier tourist location? There's not a gross... Thank you, Councillor Best. Your the, time is up. Can I just minute, clarify, are you speaking for or against I'll the motion? Now, can I just clarify, are you speaking for or against? I'm against it. Okay. Um, I'll see if I've got any... Councillor McLaughlin, second Councillor Pillen, you have one further minute, Councillor Yeah, that's Best. the second time in turn, the whole term of this council I've asked for an extension, um, to speak on the record, because this is a very important issue. It's not something that's just down south from where I come from. This is basically the icon of the Central Coast, and we are here in a public environment with the podcast running, people watching, and the journalists tapping away about our premier beach in critical trouble, and we're going down the path of a committee. To me, I don't want to vote against this. Please don't get me wrong. Of course I don't want to vote against it. But, councillors, you have a duty of care to the public. You are now in the knowledge. You have knowledge of a public health risk issue, and we're going to continue to kick the can down the road. We're not going to go, hang on for a second, why don't we pile into a confidential session and really drill down on this with our staff and get some detail and some absolute times out of Gary Murphy over there. Otherwise, these people will be complaining to the next council in 2020. You all know how that's going to end, and it's not good enough. Thank you, Councillor Best. Um, Thank excuse you. me. Um, Councillor Sunstrom, I might just clarify some wording. If we go down to part two, and it actually highlights Councillor Best's point that we are already undertaking the audit and we're already doing regular water quality monitoring, but the grammar there is just a little bit, needs a bit of fixing up. So we might just um, have the council note an audit of the Terrigal Beach catchment is currently being undertaken to identify potential sources of pollution. Uh, and then part B, it's, again, it's just rearranging wording. The council note um, that regular water quality monitoring is being conducted at Terrigal Beach Swimming Area, Terrigal Lagoon and The Haven. Uh, Councillor Sunstrom, did you want to close debate? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, yeah, I accept that the wording change there is required. Um, <clears throat> In regard to the um, urgent nature for action to be taken here, this is why I previously, previously called for um, information about where we are in the process. Um, that question on notice has not been replied to at this stage. And certainly when that information comes back in, uh, we may need to relook at this motion, maybe strengthen it, 
maybe to, to put some time frames around it. But um, overall, what we need to realise is that we've got a, a situation where people are getting ill. We've got signs that need to go up from time to time where to indicate that people can't swim, otherwise they are at risk of their health. And we've got evidence of people becoming sick through um, word of mouth from the local chemist. So, as I said before, the time for asking questions is over. It's time for action. I anticipate and look forward to the full and complete answer to my question on notice. Uh, and from there, we'll have the ability to take action in an appropriate and timely fashion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Sundstrom. So I put the motion moved by Councillor Sundstrom, seconded by Councillor McGregor. All in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Holstein, Merton, Sundstrom, Gail Collins, McGregor, Pillan, McLaughlin, Greenaway, Burke, Hogan and Smith. Uh, Councillor Best, you're opposed to the motion, is that correct? Thank you. Uh, Councillors, next item is item 2.1, 2018-19 Q2 business report. Councillor Best, I think you start this one. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll move it as is, page 25. I'm just scrolling through some other pages. Um, this would uh, go to Gary, I assume. Uh, well, we'll just get somebody to second that, so I'll just make sure, uh, get the motion up on the screen. Thank you. Uh, move Councillor Best, second to Councillor McGregor. Councillor Best. Yes, I've got a few questions of staff. Thank you for the report, gentlemen, ladies. Um, uh, I'll just bring to page 20, 26 the opening comments. I think Boris might be going to answer this. Is that correct, Gary, Mr Murphy? Who's going to answer? What's your question, Councillor Best? Um, I'd like um, if you could share with us uh, in the, uh, one of the early paragraphs current status at the end of Q2, the Council's overall progress in delivering the actions and targets against the delivery program, blah, 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 uh, has tracked well. Of the total 157 actions targeted and eight projects are completed, 137 are on track, seven are delayed and five are on hold. Could we get some expansion on the seven delayed and the five on hold, what they are and why that is the case? I understand the body of the report's got some detail in it, but people on the podcast and the community aren't able to get to that too easy. So I think that information was in the It's page attachment, 26. Wasn't it? It's the attachment. Yeah, so it is in the attachment, Councillor yeah, Best. Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, that's that correct. was up on the website, I believe. That's correct. Yep. Did you have a further question just while we're... Um, well, maybe Gary, I mean, Mr Murphy can look at this. Um, uh, Mr Murphy, on uh, page 64 and 65, you'll see that there's a, a, a wages uh, expansion or, or blowout of $5 million, which puts us on track for about a $10 million year-end expansion on wages. Um, what do you say to that, that tracking against budget on page, 60, uh, um, page 64 and 65, which will take wages to um, $200 million of the annual budget um, up 10... It, it should get to $10 million over budget if you look at the current trend, and we are at Q2, which is significant, I would think, I'm staying on page 25 because my machines are really slow. Mr Murphy. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Best, you're looking at page 64 on the attachments. Yeah, 64, 65. So the question is relating to the employee um, costs and the unfavourable... Can you speak up, Gary? Sorry. Can you, can you come closer? Sorry. The, Sorry. The question is relating to the employee costs and yes. the unfavourable operating expenditure or capital expenditure. Just simply that the wages are out by $5 million. And if you trend that forward, it should be $10 million by year end. Uh, you could look at it that way, Councillor Best, but I, could. Um, I don't believe that that is correct. So is five million currently correct? Five million is currently correct. At the As moment, over? Yes. Uh, the, I think the, um, the year-to-date variance is 4.3 million on page 64. Employee benefits and on costs. 
if that's the number you're referring to. Is that correct? Yep. So wages wages are, are generally well not generally they're they're, they're significantly over by four point three or five million dollars. Correct. Yep. Okay. Would you agree that depreciation is up by five million? Yes, five point three to be precise. I think. And is that is that really commentary around our budgeting processes? Because we should have known that was coming. Um, maybe Shane can share. Um, the second the third dot point you made. Yep. That's on 65. Yep. That's 30% under. Yep. So the explanation is on page um, 65. 65. If you're 30% under, there's really yep. not much hope of, of, of actually attaining budget if you're in the Q2 and you're that much under already. Yep. So it's a... It's a, a budgeting exercise. But I'll, I'm happy to take them on notice. I, I don't want to push yeah, sure. you guys on toast here. Yep. I'm asking genuine, genuine questions, and some of them have been asked of me by the business community. So I'm partially conduited here. Um, yep. But if there's a, a genuine answer, particularly around depreciation, some major equipment that may have been acquired that may not have been considered or written down or whatever you do to it, then I'm happy to take that, that on notice, all right? Councillor Bass, could I just check? We did have we did go through this at the councillor briefing at the planning uh, workshop. Were you not there at the time? Well, you went through it. Could you explain to me why the depreciation's up then? Since well, no, you went I don't have it? the questions in front of me, but um, we did spend quite a bit of time going through the budget and the operational plan for the upcoming year. I think you were absent, weren't you? Yes, I was. Okay. Did you have any further questions? Yes, I do. Page twenty-six. I'll go back to my original question. Uh, around the projects. There's a, a little bit of deja vu here, and we had this discussion last year. We have a policy of delivering 90% of our work. That's our, that is our credo in this council. And we have now got seven delayed and five on hold. I mean, are, are, they, are they pedestrian crossing markings or are they multi-million dollar pump stations? W what are they? Uh, Mr. Belgoff. Through you, Madam Mayor, in the um, monthly capital works, in okay. the monthly capital works update, generally identifies some of those projects that are, are, are delayed. One of those, uh, for example, at Cock Park. So there was reasonings behind that, and that was part of a, a briefing. That's an example of some of the delays in relation to ground conditions, the design and additional stormwater work that was being identified. Other projects such as Winnie Bay also are delayed um, and that has been in the council chambers previously. So there are a number of these sorts of projects that you know, have been delayed, um, some in that planning phase, some in relation to what now council has you know, made as a decision um, of the board of directors, you could say. I've got to take those on notice, but maybe we can even want to just give us an email out saying if there's anything that we really need to be mindful of that's just not going to get us and we're halfway through the year I left the Q1 alone because I understand you know hey that's a bit that's a bit unfair it's Q2 and we've got we've got the public out there wanting us to deliver 90 percent of their rates into services and if we aren't going to do that well okay that happens but we need to know why we aren't going to do it and how we can help you good folk achieve it? What, what other resource that we need to give you good folk to make that happen so that when it comes our time for judgment, we have an answer? That's all I'm about here. I'm not looking at naughty, naughty, someone hasn't done something. Just why, why? That's all. All right. So, th th Mr. Bolgoff? Yeah. Yeah. Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, there is a detailed explanation by units included in the attachments provided. So that actually identifies every project that you know, some projects were actually tracking um, better than was planned and so money was actually returned to the bottom line and other projects were tracking you know, slightly worse than it was planned. So all that is actually included in the attachments of the business paper. Yeah. Thank you. But Councillor Burst, how are you going? I'll speak to it. Um, thank you, staff. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor, councillors. Out of this, I suppose, for us to generate that important transparency that this council talks about, um, that that attachment, Gary, 
and Boris, that attachment that you talk about that is there, but the public don't quite get to drill down on it. It's a bit like trying to find a, a map on climate change. It's just a bit hard to get to at the moment. Um, so that's the kind of thing that should maybe be sitting in the report directly below that statement, because it is there, but the public are not fully across it. And look, I know a lot of people don't read this kind of stuff, but there are a lot that are quite interested in it. On a positive note, um, when you look at the cash, you look at the way the business is operating, I, I think with the amalgamation, which we don't mention the A word much these days, but with the amalgamation still playing out in the background, I think the staff are doing a, an exceptionally good job um, in trying to pull together what is ostensibly still two councils, whether we like it or not. Um, we are working to you know, change the signs and do all those good things, but you saw in the Terrigal debate just a moment ago, um, I made comment of gross pollutant traps. Well, I know Gosford's history on gross pollutant traps and it just didn't believe in them. Well, they cost a lot of money, a couple of million bucks to put a good one in. Why I went really hard at gross pollutants and put them in on all the major outfalls to catch all that litter and rubbish. But Gosford hasn't done it. I'm not rubbishing Gosford, don't get me wrong. They, they do things the way they did them. But we're doing catch up. And we're doing catch up on the budget. We're doing catch up on the systems. We're doing catch up on the IT. So catch up and running the business is extraordinarily difficult, I would well imagine. I run a business that is not unlike this business, but I'm not doing catch up. I did, I did 15 years ago. I did a terrible catch up. Extremely stressful to try and pull a catch up together and bring the right team around you, Gary. So it's not lost on myself, the effort, the contribution that's being made. However, when we look at the way it's tracking again, this Q2 is going to take us into where we were last year. And we got, I don't even remember the figure, maybe 80, 75% of, of projects completed. Um, and we did promise to deliver 90. Now, if we've got amalgamation running in the background and you guys and girls are under the pump, which you are, maybe we say to the community, look, because of what's playing in the background, we're going to deliver 80%. That's what we're going to deliver. That's our milestone this year. That's not giving in or surrendering. That's just being honest and upfront and realising that you're doing 120% because you're doing all the stuff in the background as well, which tends to kind of fall a bit silent. We all forget about this amalgamation going on. You know, it, it really is playing big in your lives out there and it's not lost on me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Best. Um, Councillor Best, I would again just encourage you to attend some of the councillor briefings where oh, we've gone you, through Madam some Madam of this information. Um, by all means, you know, I think it's valuable for you to note the points that you've made. I'll, but let, I'll let my father know that. Thank you very yep. much. Um, councillor Best, um, I'll put the motion moved by Councillor Best. Oh, sorry, Councillor McGregor, did you want to speak to that? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor, for the opportunity to um, talk to this. It's got a couple of questions. Um, the first one is about the Warnervale contribution plan, which is deferred for a workshop. It's on page 49. Um, could I just get some feedback about when that workshop's likely to occur and what shape that would take, what form that workshop would be? Through the CEO to Mr Cox, is that right? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor McGregor. Yes, the matter was reported to Council. Um, this was the Section 712 contribution plan in December. It was deferred for a Councillor workshop um, and presentation. Basically, staff will be drilling down into the detail of what's in the contributions plan in terms of the projects that, um, that, that have been identified in that plan um, and also to the funding um, um, opportunities as part of that plan with the 1% levy, um, identify areas where the contribution plan currently doesn't apply, um, but it will also identify the fact that currently in the um, former Wyong that mums and dads actually have to pay a, a, a levy on um, uh, housing renovations and new dwellings. Um, the proposed plan would look at removing um, that, um, that levy for um, uh, mums and dad developments, residential houses. Um, so basically just go into to more detail to inform the councillors so that when the matter does come back up to council, um, they've been given plenty of opportunity to consider what's in the plan. Thank you for your answer and the added detail in that. A further question, which I, I believe might also be your department, it may be someone else's. Um, it's on page 58 again, talking about parks and reserves being 90% completed um, with the scheduled servicing. 
I was just wondering, and it sort of in some ways goes further to the points that were made earlier by Councillor Best, who's doing that servicing? Are they contractors? Are they direct council employees? And, and roughly how many people do we have on it? Is it a large team, small team? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, unfortunately, Council, I'll have to take that one on notice. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Thank you. Um, I've got another couple of questions as well. Um, the other questions are about the pools, the libraries and Niagara Park Stadium, so I believe that may well be Director Vaughan. Um, I note that there's been over 500,000 visits to local libraries in the last year. Is that more or less than previous years or is that an average attendance over the time of your involvement in the area? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Councillor McGregor, I understand there has been an increase. Um, we've obviously diversifying programs and, um, you know, have increased our e-resources but also maintained our level of um, paperback um, you know, publications, but yes, I understand that we have increased. Um, certainly the opportunities that have been realised through the amalgamation now that residents can live anywhere across the coast and benefit from any of our libraries has certainly seen an increase as well. Thank you, and roughly exactly the same question about the pools. Obviously there's been a few less people going to the pools and the libraries, but is that attendance steady or is that up or down? Through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor McGregor, um, you, you may recall that following amalgamation, um, Council resumed the operations in the former north, so for Wyong Pool and Tookley Pool, so um, we've certainly seen an increase. However, noting that Wyong's not opened all year round, um, certainly both Peninsula Leisure Centre and Gosford Pool uh, ha have high levels of attendances and um, continue to grow. Thank you. And final question, just on the... Um Niagara Park Stadium, I was a bit surprised it said that there had been 75,000 visits year to date. So is that, um, is that more or less or is that roughly what we're expecting with that as well? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I probably don't know the detail enough on that to give you a comparison against our other um, facilities. So it may be best to take that on note and um, provide you a more detailed response. That's okay. That's okay. And are there any other comparable facilities to the Niagara Park Stadium on the Central Coast or is that a unique facility that we have there? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I mean, certainly the opportunities that we realise at Niagara Park because of the number of courts, um, we certainly attract a lot of state and national um, competitions ranging from basketball, netball, um, trampolining, uh, roller derby. Um, the only other comparable one in the sense of four courts is the Terrigal Basketball Stadium. Um, certainly Lake Haven Recreation Centre and the PCYC EDSAC um, both have two courts and attract a high level of... Um, you know, competitions, but um, Niagara Park is certainly, um, would be classified as our, you know, more premier, um, you know, attractor. Thank you very much for answering the questions. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Councillors, I don't have any speakers against, so I'll put the motion moved by Councillor Best, seconded by Councillor McGregor. All in favour? Any opposed? Carried. I uh, didn't have anybody speaking against Councillor Best, so you're off the hook. Um, next item is item 3.1, response to notice of motion regarding apprentices and trainees. Councillor McGregor, um, and by leave Councillor Best, you're vacating the chamber. Councillor McGregor. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I would have been happy to let this one go through with exception. I'd started earlier thinking there might be a couple of other people that want to talk about it, but I'll just briefly... Um, uh, like can to... I just get a seconder if, you're, yeah. if that's the motion that you're moving? Seconded by Councillor Hogan. Councillor McGregor, sorry. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I'd just like to speak briefly to thank the staff for the quality of the report and the direction of the report. I think it's a very positive step in the right direction. And like we heard in the last um, segment of council, there's actually quite a lot of activity going on and there's quite a lot of big wins for council here, this one included in them. And rather than talking down what the staff are doing and searching for cryptoids and trying to give loaded questions and answers and things like that, I think it's appropriate that we acknowledge the hard work and the good work that's going on here and the achievements of council. And I commend this report to the floor and I encourage my colleagues to vote for it as well. Um, it's an excellent report and thank you very much for putting it together and heading in that direction. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Councillor Hogan, did you want to speak as seconder?
Yes, thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, I was absolutely thrilled when I got received this report back. It's something that I that I've um, and Councillor McGregor have worked very closely around, it, which is about employment and young people, and ensuring that we have direct employment um, for our young people. So there's a natural progression from apprenticeships to or traineeships, and then to actually full-time work. There's nothing better than saying, you know, especially for young men who are really struggling in our council to find a career path to say, oh, I've got a job with council. You know, my dad works at council. And um, I was, yeah, I, I can say I'm really thrilled about this. It's probably one of the biggest things that have come to the chamber in terms of supporting our young people on the coast. And I commend this report and thank the staff for looking at this objectively and ensuring that our young people are supported. So um, I really hope there's no objectors to this one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hogan. Councillors, are there any speakers against? Then I'll put the motion moved by Councillor McGregor, seconded by Councillor Hogan. All in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Holstein, Merton, Sundstrom, Gail Collins, McGregor, Pillen, McLaughlin, Greenaway, Burke, Hogan and Smith. That's carried. Um, we'll allow Councillor Best back in and then we'll be moving on to item 5.1, um, Councillor McGregor. We'll just wait for Councillor Best. Councillor Burgo, nobody can answer that. Uh, thank you, Councillor McGregor. Um, did you, you're moving that way? Uh, a seconder? Councillor Mertens, Councillor McGregor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I rise to support my own motion. Evidently, that would seem the thing to do. But to pr provide some details on it to, um, to actually get where this is coming from for those that aren't familiar with it, the Office of Local Government, which is the peak local government body, is running a series of campaigns. We've all supported the Waste Levy campaign, and this is another one of their campaigns that they're running. It's about library funding. As we heard in discussion of the earlier report, the attendance at libraries is going up. Um, people are engaging with libraries in new, new ways that they haven't been before, and there's a real urgency to get um, better libraries, better quality things. However, the problem is, is that the funding hasn't gone up for some time. The funding has been sorely lacking, and we need to try and secure further funding for libraries. It's particularly, particularly important for our region when you consider the demographics. You've got lots of younger people, lots of seniors who are, who are large users of the library. And also one of the key projects that this council is committed to supporting and getting involved in with the uh, regional library and coming good on that 30 year wait that Gosford Council had to, to develop the regional library in Gosford. So the, the main focus of this is your bread and butter issues with the library in terms of getting more money to ensure that we do have high quality facilities and the best quality facilities we can have. It's, uh, it's a bipartisan approach. It's calling on all people uh, who are running for the state government to commit to this similar to the Better Services campaign and other things that have been run in previous, previous elections. So I would encourage everyone to support it. Again, as I've said with previously with other motions tonight, it's not partisan, it's not political or anything like that. This is a bread and butter core function of council and it's just requesting that we get the resources and the funding to be able to deliver the core services that we all believe in and that we all want to supply for our community. So I'd encourage all the councillors to support it, particularly noting the increasing trends with the usage of our libraries and the need to resource them. So I commend the motion to the floor. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Councillor Mertens, did you want to speak a seconder? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you to Councillor McGregor for bringing this forward. As he mentioned, this is uh, one of several campaigns that um, local government New South Wales are, are spearheading um, as we move forward, um, just to make sure that the $800 million that does go um, not into council uh, accounts, but get taken away by state government, 
um, is returned. Local, our local libraries are, are, are a phenomenal service. I think that um, I did a bit of a, a, a poll around people I know concerning how many people they think visited our, our libraries over the last 12 months. Um, You've got, you got numbers as low as 10,000 up to 50,000, but I think that when you actually tell people that we had one million visits to our libraries, uh, that blows people out. I think no one would have any concept that that is just how many people or just how many times that our libraries are accessed. Um, they are phenomenal local assets. I, I was at um, the Erinus Centre Library uh, just the other Saturday and it was packed. I was there uh, reading over my business paper because I was kicked out of my home. Um, so I was at, the, at that library all day uh, and it was packed from, uh, from opening to close. And I think that is a phenomenal um, idea of what we can do with our libraries. They should be packed. They should be places where people can go uh, to read, to work, to study, to whatever it might be. Um, I think that the, the disappointing thing um, that we do have um, is that people don't necessarily know that they're available and all the services that are available. I think that um, looking through the, all the e-services that are now available, all the subscriptions that you can get through our local libraries um, aren't known by people. So I would encourage um, council to be able to, to push these services uh, as an advertising campaign more. I think people should know what's going on. Um, I look forward to, to hopefully seeing more funding from our lo for our local libraries coming through. Um, from the New South Wales government. I think that they are an absolute place where, you know, they're one of the final places that people can go that is free. Um, they can actually sit down and, and, and just have some quiet time. You can't, can't sit in a cafe anyway, you have to pay for things. There are no more public squares. Like, libraries are the last bastion um, of places to go for people. So I would encourage everyone to support this motion. This is a non-partisan motion. This is literally just um, council trying to reclaim some money for, for our local libraries. Um, I think both parties and, and both um, and the New South Wales government needs to come to the table and actually fund local government properly and look after our local libraries. Thank you, Councillor Mertens. Councillor Best. Yes, yeah, very briefly. I won't even take. I, won't even, I can actually get a credit on the minute a minute ago. Um, this will come as a bit of a shock, but um, Kyle, if I can call him that, um, this is an excellent motion. Thank you for bringing it to the chamber. Um, it, it needs to be done. We have to win this, and as Richard, Councillor Mertens just outlined these things are being used so much by the new generation, um, as much as is the older generation. I'm not sure we will we'll struggle with the word library. I think we're going to find another another name for it when the generations change, because the connotation of library is library, and it does just so much more. The why I wanted to bore the chamber's time with me speaking is I particularly wanted to thank Julie. Um, uh, Councillor Vaughan, um, Julie Vaughan's team's contribution to our libraries. When you go to those libraries, those ladies are fantastic. You know, my kids go to the libraries a lot. My daughter's just going to enter her first year in law after her first degree. She lives at the library with her partner. Um, they find it an extraordinarily um, good spot to study around like-minded individuals, and they are safe. Um, they are comfortable and they have at their disposal what they need to be the next generation. So um, I think it's nice to talk about the motion, Kyle, and I fully support you. But Julie, if you would take back to your team um, our chamber's sincere appreciation um, for all the work that goes on behind the scenes and at the counter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Bess. Councillor Greenaway. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just um, wanted to um, acknowledge the staff on a similar vein, but not just the women, the men that work in the library too. Um, I've found to, they've been of exceptional help to me when I've been in there. Um, and I think as Miss Vaughan was saying, the services in libraries these days have been vastly extended from what we might remember as just books. And um, apart from having things like the photocopying and printing services and the computer services and the DVDs and CDs and the history groups, and guest speakers, they also have children's programs, which I used to take my children to, so they help them with their literacy, early literacy skills. Um, they help, help with research and things like that. So um, real credit to the library services, and um, I commend the motion and thank Councillor McGregor for bringing it forward, because I did see it in the local government report and thought someone needs to act on that, so I'm glad you have. Thank you, Councillor Greenaway. Councillors, are there any speakers against? Then I'll put the motion moved by Councillor McGregor, seconded by Councillor Mertens. All in favour? Councillor Holstein, Mertens, Sunstrom, Gail Collins, McGregor, Pillen, McLaughlin, Greenaway, Burke, Hogan, Best and Smith. Thank you, Councillors. Next item is item 6.1, rescission motion draft aviation hub. Um, move Councillor Best, 
Seconded. Councillor Pillan. Councillor Best. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, councillors. Councillors, um, I rise on what will be a historic occasion um, here on this date, which I should know the date because it's a council meeting, 25th of February 2019. Um, if this rescission motion goes the way of the previous five rescission motions, this council will be in a space of unparalleled history of voting down the capacity to consult with its community. The rescission motion and the motion before us at the moment, councillors, um, uh, we fully support um, the maintenance of the War Act. Nobody argues with that, and nor has it been attempted to be argued with. Um, the areas uh, of the consistency with the War Act, to not change the runway, to not change the thickness, and that council suspend all works. Well, you know, one can live with all that. But what I do find interesting, Mr Murphy, is that when you look at the original motion that's running, council immediately suspend all works, land acquisitions, blah, 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 except where those works require by law or the suspension of those works would put council in breach of existing contractual obligations. I thought we actually went and did that by tearing up the, the AAI contract, which cost council a fortune under confidential. I can't go into the actual amount, but we tore that contract up. And that is a direct contradiction of what this council's legislation currently is. And we didn't rescind this. We acted against our own position, because that's what it says in here, that we will not, we will not do anything contractually that will damage the council. And we went and did it. And it damaged the council by an extraordinary amount of money. That's a, a byproduct of this exercise. So when you legislate in this room, you actually should abide by your legislation. And we've breached that. And on the podcast, I understand there are some interesting people watching tonight, and I welcome them. Because, gentlemen, this is the fifth time that this council will have likely voted this down. And this council has lost its planning powers when it comes, councillors, to Gosford. It has, uh, I have uh, hovering over it. It has lost the Dark and Jung Land Council's land approvals. Um, which is the largest landowner in the Shire. Um, we have howled from the rafters about the IHAB and be not one bit surprised if the government moves on this council after the election around the lack of consultation. Mr Coddington came in here and has on numerous occasions, thank you John for your time again this evening, to plead with this council to simply, simply put out, not the former councils, but the administrators, the administrators $450,000 report, ratepayer funded report, a $450,000 report that's put out for exhibition. Some will jump to their feet and go, oh, but that's already on the website, it's already been consulted. Well, why just not put the climate change policy up on the website and don't go and consult with anybody? Why run meetings and public forums? If that's as important as it is, and it is by the way, this is equally as important. And we are denying the community their natural justice and their natural ability to be consulted. And this council will pay the price after the election if the government's re-elected. Re Thank you, Councillor Best. Councillor Pillan, did you want to speak as seconder? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I will uh, rise to speak on this rescission motion yet again. Uh, we as a council should con continue to stand by and support our local aviation employment hub as a necessity for our Central Coast region. This rescission is based around transparency and the need for a community survey and consultation particularly given this project was to deliver much needed jobs for our region, greater tourism, improve training for our youth and improve employment <coughs> skills, together with greater hangar space as mentioned by our speaker tonight. I understand we have council surveys that have been done in the past that people feel that the questions may be misleading or possibly to one side. Should this rescission motion be supported, this new motion put forward allows for all survey questions to be the subject of a full council briefing with selected survey specialists prior to conducting the consultation period. I would ask what sort of message is council sending to the community if we continue to deny them the right to formally engage on this important issue? There are many unhappy constituents in our Central Coast region seeking transparency around our aviation hub. This is still being seen on social media posts, even today and yesterday, and emails being received by councillors from the public. As councillors, we have an obligation to show good governance. The airport master plan came to all of us as an amalgamated council, not just Wyong Shire Council, not just Wyong Ward councillors, but to all of us as a Central Coast region. And all our 
uh, opinions should remain open until after seeing independent surveys and consultation across the whole Central Coast region. None of us can claim to know exactly what outcomes the public wants as we haven't bothered to listen to the wider community. The closest we know is a Micromax survey of 400 people completed in February 2013 by the Wyong Shire Council on the concept of developing a regional airport at Bushells Ridge. 67% of the 400 respondents asked were either very supportive or supportive of the Bushells Ridge Airport concept and 84% were at least somewhat supportive. I would ask those of you who continue to oppose this, what are you afraid of finding out from an independent survey seeking direction and better understanding of community expectations on our aviation hub at Warner Vale? At present, certain councils are sending a clear message to the public that they continue to vote on this issue based on their own personal opinion or on behalf of who they represent on the council without transparent consideration of the uh, broader community. Councillor Greenaway, what's your point of order? Take a seat, please, Councillor. Point of order, two points of order. Um, interjections from Councillor Best. He constantly says Council point of view every time someone raises a point of order. I just wonder. What's if your you could... point of order, Councillor? Well, that's my point of order that he's interrupting. Well, that needs procedure. to be a second one because you called a point okay, of order well, the before first one, that. Um, the comments that um, Councillor Pillen was making about people's personal views and the views of their backers, those sorts of things, um, I think he's imputing motive, which I understand is not permissible under our code of meeting practice. Um, Councillor Pillen, can you please clarify your statement? Thank you, Madam Mayor. My statement is around the fact that we have not had a survey done across the entire Central Coast. Yes, we all have. So, Councillor Pillen, I think it related to your comment uh, trying to attribute motive. Is that the statement you want to clarify or withdraw? Uh, I'll draw that if there's an okay, issue. Okay, thank Madam you, Councillor Pillen. I just uh, take your seat, Councillor Greenaway. Constant interjections whenever someone says point of order, he says point of view, point of view. And I just think maybe it's about time he stopped doing so that. So, what basis under the. Um, um, interrupting the procedures, not following I the think proper rules of debate. Well, interjections are not appropriate for it, the um, you, they're not in the proper rules of debate. Um, Councillor Greenaway, I'm not really sure that that is a point of order, but I will ask Councillor Best to not interject, please. Councillor Pillen, could you finish, please? Sorry. Councillor Best. Councillor Best. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I would finally like to just ask all councillors, before you blindly shut this decision down once again, that you do consider not just voting along party lines or what you promise voters, but to really consider um, how can anyone argue upon ha putting out a Micromax survey to this whole entire Thank you, region. Councillor Pillen. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors, are there any speakers against the rescission motion? Councillor McGregor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It should be quite simple enough to just say speaking against. However, that would be rather pithy, much like this motion. This is the fifth time we've had this debate. I don't know why we have to keep having this debate. It's rather clear the way that these things go. It's also rather clear, if you've bothered to read the master plan, that many of the statements made previously by the previous speakers are simply false. So I'm going to leave it at that, and I would just request that people actually speak the truth when they speak about this and within the confines of what we're able to do, rather than putting out plain falsity to the community over social media and otherwise over the webcast. There's 23 people watching this at present, so I'm not sure which ones are the important ones that we're supposed to be scared of that we got threatened about, but I'm not scared and I'm not threatened and I've voted the same way five times and I will continue to every time you bring this up. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Councillor Greenaway, you want to speak on this item? Um, yes, I just wanted to respond to some of the comments. Um, one was we were asked what sort of message are we sending and I feel that we're sending a very important message to the community and that is that we've got their best interests at heart and that we're acting on um, according to how we said we would and that is being transparent and that is being accountable. Um, as far as people um, wanting to comment, whilst it might not be technically on public exhibition, it definitely is on the website and if people are that keen to promote this, they can be like any other member of the community, such as people who want a skate park, they can lobby for it. If they want something else done, they can lobby for it. They don't need to have something on a website inviting them to comment. And I am yet to receive, I must have, I think I got one anonymous text today, um, and a couple of other ones in the whole 
what is it, one and a half years. So I can promise you, if there is an issue that really gets my attention, I have got way more than one or two emails in one and a half years. So I'm not sure who all these keen people are, but they're certainly not getting in touch with me. They might be saying things on social media, but if anyone wants to know the facts, they wouldn't be looking there. Thank you, Councillor Greenaway. Um, Councillor Best, did you want to close the debate? Madam Mayor, I'm terribly sorry for interrupting. It'll never happen again. I don't know what came Councillor Best, could you so just Madam close Mayor, debate? What we've and got here is we've got a council bouncing around, clutching and clinging to straws to try and justify and not wanting to consult its community. I mean, nonsense statements like transparency. I mean, what is transparent about this? And that it's on the website. I mean, that is, that is basically an insult to consultation. I go back to my point about the climate change policy. If the argument about this being Councillor the... Best, how about we keep to this well, well, particular this, this matter part of because the it's not I mean, relevant and well, you're closing debate with any new information from the debate. So if you could well, Greenway either just spoke speak about to this close 30 seconds the debate ago. or take a seat. Councillor Greenaway spoke about this 30 seconds ago okay. and I'm following on from that Then if you can speak the to the rescission motion, please. Thank you very please. much. So what we've got, councillors, is we've got councillors considering whether it's truthful, factual, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. I've said in this chamber many times before, it doesn't matter what we think. It's what the community wants. And we need to know what that is. And you could simply, as, as Councillor Pillen has eloquently outlined, we could put a Micromex survey out there for $25,000 and ask the community. We've got a general manager sitting here who has championed an aviation hub at Lismore and got the job and, and the economic benefits that flow from it. We've got an architect sitting in this room and we're not even prepared to go down the path of putting our toe in the water formally and asking the community about this issue. This, this particular industry will underpin and gives Mr Cox and his team the platform to drive the hub, which is the Warnervale Development Employment Zone, right? The WES. This is its anchor. If you take its anchor away, the boat drifts and it'll just drift away. This can be the trigger, the catalyst for the growth of the, of, the, of the WES. Why is the WES going nowhere? Because of actions like this. We continue to sabotage this place economically and we continue to whinge about jobs. We talk about apprentices and trainees in this room, which I have to um, abdicate on that issue. But I know in my heart what it takes for those kids to get a go and what their faces look like on an absolute daily basis, councillors. And there are jobs. I have been to all these regional Councilor airports Best, and looked you at their jobs. Councillor Best, you just keep your decision motion, Well, please. Madam Mayor, as I say, this is the fifth time that I've put this into the chamber, and there will come a sixth time, and I will look at amending that um, so that we can drive down on the employment opportunities. But, councillors, be under no misapprehension that this council has had every single chance to genuinely consult with the community and it gives nothing but tokenised lip service and, and excuses that it's up on the website, so that's fine. So, Madam Mayor, if it's okay to be up on the website and that's going to satisfy some in this chamber, why is the climate change policy not just up on the website and we listen to people text us? Why are we consulting you the community on Councillor climate Best? change? Or you See still the going? point I'm trying to make? There is no difference. They're both critically important because of the importance that is that the community has a say. Right or wrong, the community gets a say. Thank you, Councillor Best. I'll put the rescission motion moved by Councillor Best, seconded by Councillor <coughs> Pillen. All in favour of the rescission motion, please. Councillor Holstein, Councillor Gay Collins, Pillen, McLaughlin and Best. Those opposed? Councillor Merton, Sundstrom, McGregor, Greenaway, Burke, Hogan and Smith. The Division, rescission motion Madam, is Division, lost. Please. Um, councillors, those in favour of the Division. rescission motion? Councillor Holstein. <laughs> Councillor Holstein, Gail Collins, Pillen, Mick Lachlan and Best. Those opposed, please stand. <laughs> Councillor Merton, Sundstrom, McGregor, Pillen, Greenaway, Burke, Hogan and Smith. Thank you. Uh, councillors, we move on to questions on notice. So, Councillor Holstein, did you have any questions on notice? Mm -hmm. Councillor Mertens, Councillor Sundstrom, Councillor Gail Collins. Madam Mayor, uh, what is the current balance of reserved funds generally collected under the DSP for water supply and sewage infrastructure works intended to service our growing population? And are there funds within the retained account that could be released now to facilitate the delivery, delivery of infrastructure that might lead to jobs upon our existing zoned employment lands 
or to facilitate land supply and also job growth in some of our growing urban release areas? And can staff also provide a comment on how we might better align infrastructure delivery to some of the rezoning proposals or larger DAs currently underway? Councillor Gail Collins, it's quite a long question on notice. Um, did you have another one? No? no? Thank you. All right. Councillor McGregor. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, I've got two. The first one is, how is Council responding to residents' concerns about the state of Dari Road at Wyonga? Uh, on notice, yes. On Yep. This, the second question. Uh, wait a second, Councillor McGregor. I think Mr. Bolgoff is going to provide a response. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. There was a two coat seal on the road pavement undertaken, um, I think, in August last year. Um, it's not performing as intended, so there is some loose stones. That's going to be rectified over the next you know, four to six weeks and resurfaced. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor McGregor. Um, the second question. How is Council progressing with the implementation of the resolution on the local procurement policy and by local campaign, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Mertens and endorsed unanimously by councillors on the 24th of September 2018? Uh, I think that'll be on notice, Councillor McGregor. Councillor Pillen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to ask what actions uh, Central Coast Council is taking to actively promote, support and administer recycling, uh, given the Penrith Council saved 17 million in tipping and collection costs in the past financial year. And the second question um, I raised earlier tonight in the motion, and given the answer, I'd like to ask that again, please, um, as to why Council did not apply for any of the tens of millions of dollars available through the Coastal and Estuary Grant Program to address the water quality at Terrigal Beach, Wombra Lagoon, Terrigal Lagoon, um, despite funding being available. Thank you, Councillor yeah. Pillen. I assume so, that's on notice. Councillor McLaughlin. No, Councillor Greenaway. Just seeking confirmation, is there a report being prepared for councillors to consider the job creation opportunities from the monies retained pursuant to the airport motion of 27 November 2017? Um, I think that's on notice, isn't it? Yes, on notice, Councillor Green. Okay, and part B of that, if there is, when are we likely to be receiving that? Okay, I think they'll go together. Councillor Burke? No? Councillor Hogan? Thanks, Madam Mayor. Question one, could staff please provide a scorecard on how we are progressing with increasing employment opportunities for people with a disability? And second to that is, could staff please provide a, a scorecard on how we are progressing with increasing employment opportunities for Aboriginal people? Thank you, Councillor Hogan. Yes, uh, Councillor Best. I think my second question ever. Um, Mr. And this is not quite what it is. Mr. Murphy, could you please advise whether staff are aware of any hazardous chemical materials such as CAC, chromium copy, copper arsenic, uh, or known carcinogenic creosote, or any other hazardous material storage that has been unearthed in the Greater Warnervale area? If so, when? Who has been advised? And what remediation slash capping may have been applied to this material um, if it has been identified? I assume that's on notice. Uh, just yes. one, Councillor Best. All right. Thank you, councillors. The meeting is closed. Thank you.